We had to talk about the four year halving cycle of Bitcoin because I don't think I look at it the same way that a lot of people do because I actually don't look at it at all. And that's what's striking me as different is that like when I approach Bitcoin and just the concept of Bitcoin, like I'm thinking about replacing my money that I use daily with Bitcoin. And that's the way I look at it. So I'm just constantly all like all year round, whatever we are in the halving cycle, that's what I'm thinking about. I just realized I should probably put the rain cover on the uni. So the halving happens every four years and it is the monetary policy of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is open source software that has its own monetary policy that's set in stone ahead of time so that everyone knows about it. Okay, so not set in stone, but like group wise agreed to by using the software and by running the node, that is the monetary software, monetary policy of the software and the social consensus that everyone follows by being a part of Bitcoin. So the 21 million cap and then the amount that are released every single block reward gets cut in half every four years, which makes it a deflationary currency, which is awesome. So a deflationary currency with a hard cap is what makes it so much different than USD, which is controlled by a private group of effectively politicians that just choose the lending rate, which effectively then layers out how much USD gets produced. And that number is constantly changing and it's so hard to measure what the total amount is at any one given time. The four year halving cycle then kind of has has it's it's like created this thesis or just this pattern of things that have happened where these booms and bust cycles of bitcoin so uh bitcoin price will go up really high and then it'll crash it'll go up really high and then it'll crash and that has been like loosely tied to the four-year cycle of when the halving happened so but every kind of like new cycle or whatever it it kind of there, there's this debate i guess or discussion on like how true or not true like the halving cycle is and, it, and it's just something that like i'm i'm being like truly honest it's never really like entered my brain like i've never fully i guess maybe because it's like the 2015 thing like i entered at a weird time or whatever but it's never been like a reason for buying bitcoin or a reason for not buying bitcoin or like it, it hasn't been a part of anything because I look at Bitcoin as a replacement for the dollar because Bitcoin has a better monetary policy and is a better technology for money than the dollar is, period. And so the, I have, I'm not really tracking like booms or busts with that. I'm more just kind of tracking like what is the public sentiment around Bitcoin and how is that different or in line with how I'm feeling about it and the adoption that's happening in my own life. Like I consider myself kind of at the, not at the forefront or whatever, but among like me and like, you watching this, anyone using Bitcoin or holding Bitcoin today are the pioneers, like are the people that are choosing to take the economic risk to participate in the Bitcoin network. And you're like, when you're buying Bitcoin, you're your your labor like your time and effort you are choosing to put into bitcoin instead of into dollars like that's literally what buying bitcoin is and you could say that of any investment which is fine and that's what i just talked about in my previous video was that like even people that aren't bitcoiners or don't believe in bitcoin by simply looking for a better performing investment than the dollar is saying that the underlying currency at the dollar is like not strong and like continuing to be a weaker and weaker kind of like measuring stick and currency. So everyone is effectively like backing that up almost like all the time. And so that is happening all the time. Like the USD that is always happening to it all the time, regardless of where we are in the Bitcoin four year cycle, which again is part of what I'm saying is that it just doesn't really matter. Like the four year cycle doesn't really matter if you're kind of a pioneer pushing forward Bitcoin as That's a kind of what I want to normalize here on YouTube is the concept of just looking at the money that you use today and upgrading that money just like in your life normal day to day again like niching even farther down middle class salary like people in the suburbs like just like classic regular people is 
normalizing this concept of just upgrading your money, upgrading your money. Because I don't understand how so many YouTubers talk so confidently about this four year cycle and like trading the Bitcoin four year cycle to return more fiat. Like I, that's not the only lens that this whole thing is happening through. And I would argue that the lens that will serve, again, just like classic regular people better is looking at it as a technology upgrade. Bitcoin is better money and you're able to adopt it in your life the same way you adopt having better technology. The same way you have an upgraded iPhone that has better features than the previous iPhone is the same way as adopting Bitcoin instead of dollars. And then the fact that there is a four year having is a, I guess like a detail, like it's a detail of why Bitcoin works. It's not a central driving part of like, when you should buy Bitcoin or when you should sell Bitcoin. Now look, I'm not trying to be a full grouch on the topic or whatever, because if it's a motivator for you to stack more or kind of stack more in a short amount of time, knowing that the halving is coming, then sweet, like that's awesome. And and, and I understand that like as a early stacking mechanism goal to talk about kind of like news events or like cycles and like talking about price predictions and things like that is very motivating. Like when I first typed in Bitcoin into the YouTube search bar 10 years ago, like those are the kind of videos I was watching too. And like, so they do serve a purpose in terms of like creating excitement and getting that early dopamine that's required to kind of move you from a place of just seeing Bitcoin as an investment or fun, like side, like thing that you're doing into moving towards it, replacing your money for sure. No, for sure. So if that's the stage that you're at, of just say is a motivator and that's why it's interesting, then that's awesome. And is there truth behind Bitcoin being the reward of the block reward being cut in half every four years, having a positive effect on making the USD exchange rate go higher? Probably, like probably, like that is the, like that's literally what supply and demand is. But what's awesome and that I'm trying to just like rebring up is the demand side, like the demand side is our economic activity, like our day-to-day -day normal people economic activity choosing to pr shove our productivity towards the Bitcoin bucket instead of the USD bucket, that demand is so important. And like you having that demand and choosing to use this currency instead of that currency, instead of just use this thing to, do, to get more of the fiat currency is so powerful. Like that's so much more powerful to wrap your head around sending your labor and sending your productivity towards the Bitcoin bucket instead of the USD bucket. And that can happen all the time, regardless of the cycle.